another tutorial. So if you remember from one of my last videos, I had shown um, a discovery that was made by Jennifer Miller, uh, some Jesse James beads that were at Walmart. I knew they had carried some strands and little mini mixes in the past, but these um, items were new to me and I kind of forgot about them until I rewatched one of her videos and I'm like, oh yeah. So then I ran out to the store and I bought a few of them. I bought my favorite ones. I bought red because we have Christmas coming up. So I already opened it because we plan on working with this today and it makes a lot of noise and there was a bunch of staples to undo. So we have the red and gold one and we have, sorry, I should have had them closer to myself. We have a blue and gold, which is really pretty. Sorry, the packaging gives it kind of a glare, but when we use it, I'll open them all up and put them in little containers so you can see them. And then we have crystal with silver. So I thought this would be really pretty too. And I'm kind of excited to use these and um, see what I can come up with. So they were all around, I believe it was $5.98 for a package, which isn't bad because there's 100 plus, 100 plus pieces in there. Um, so yes, some are acrylic, some are glass, um, but I think they're all really, really pretty. And there's a lot of times that you can't get some of the acrylic beads that, you know, um, I'm sorry, some of the glass beads that if they were as big as the acrylic beads would just be very, very heavy. So I kind of embrace acrylic mixed in with glass and everything. It kind of um, just lightens up the piece um, even more. And if you can see, we have Cheeto taking another nap back here. He likes sitting in here. That's his spot. That's why my plastic container has like a, like a, a <laughs> it's like, I don't know. I need something stronger from him to lay on because he's 15 pounds and he's kind of a big boy. So um, anyway, he's joining us again today. And um, if he wakes up, I'll grab him and put him towards the camera more so you guys can see him up close and personal. All right, so with that being said, I am going to turn you around and we are going to make something with this red window box bead mix from Jesse James Beads found at Walmart. Okay, everyone, so I opened up the package and this is what comes in the package. You have a bunch of really pretty spacer beads and bead caps in here. Just a bunch of different ones. I love these big, these big, beautiful, like, they remind me of spurs. I don't know, but they're kind of cool. I love those. And then you have some um, gold tone beads. These are really pretty. Those are really, really pretty. And then you have um, a couple earring dangles, or you can use them as pendants. These are also really, really pretty. And then you have two toggle clasps, one a little bit larger than the other. This one's really, really cute. And you have these four flower beads. I thought these were really, really pretty. You have, whoops, these two large, um, like coin or lentil beads. You have a bunch of um, transparent red faceted beads, a couple longer ones like this. We have these really pretty, I, I love these, these satiny finished beads. They're so smooth and so pretty. But here's a couple coin beads too, just super, super pretty. And then you have some more opaque red. And those are really pretty too, a couple different sizes. So you have some um, looks like eight millimeter and some maybe four or three millimeter. All right, so what I want to do out of this set is I would like to get two bracelets and two pairs of earrings. And if there's anything left, then um, maybe we'll be able to make something else from it. So I'm gonna move everything aside and we're gonna pick some things and um, see what we want to use for our first bracelet. So what I am bringing with me too, as well, um, I have um, my Crypt Tubes Milan size two. I have a couple pairs of ear wires. Well, I have three out here, but I'll grab the other one. I have some, <coughs> excuse me, 
some uh, wire guardians. And I have some of my, I have the beetle on seven strand beading wire. Here's a piece that was left off my spool that just emptied out. So we're gonna make sure we use that. Um, just in case we wanna do any wrapping or anything like that, or um, I brought this as well. And this is 22 gauge um, artistic wire. So I have everything I think we need. I have our tools and everything else. So let me get my air wires out there. Okay. <laughs> All right. And so I think what I want to do is I'm going to just kind of push this all up to the top here and we'll like pick out some beads and see where we want to go with it. So I know I definitely want to use these in one of my bracelets. I love these. And I think along with those, we need these large spacers because I think they would just look so cute with that. So we have a few of those. Let me grab those out. I actually have quite a few. And we'll use them. We'll use our last one of them. So we have those and I'm seeing something kind of asymmetrical. So maybe all the larger beads on one side and then um, a bunch of the little tinier beads on the other side. So um, I really think I want to use the opaque beads. And we're just gonna dump that whole tray out because I think we'll end up using all of that. And then along with that, we definitely need some gold in there. So let's grab a couple of these gold spacers. Just maybe two, we'll grab more if we need to. And I really want to use this guy with this one and save that really pretty other one for the other ones. And then let's grab a few of these um, B caps for um, our bigger beads and some of these daisy spacers as well. Not sure how many of those we're gonna use right away, but let's start there and let's go ahead and we can string this bracelet. I'll get rid of all that stuff, let's get that out of the way. And if we need more, we have more up there at the top, but I really wanna just concentrate on making this one first. So we have all of our stuff that we need gonna make some room here and I already decided that I know I wanted to make it asymmetrical so here's my beading wire and since I know that I can go ahead and crimp down the one side and put a um, a wire guardian I don't know why I always have such trouble <laughs> remembering what I'm trying to say so let me open this up and we'll dump a few of these out because we'll use them I think I'm gonna just probably string beads today. I don't know if I'm gonna do, whoop, they just kind of flew out of there. I don't know, I guess we'll see how it goes with the other one. So let me put these off to the side here so we have them. And then I'm just going to grab my one end and I'm gonna put my uh, little tiny crimp tube on there. I'm gonna get my glasses back. I don't, I don't know why, I just, I always pick it up my glasses on when I sit down. I don't need them for like all the time use. It's basically to see anything far away and anything up close. So I have the, like the transitional bifocals. All right, and then I'm putting my wider guardian on and giving enough space at the top here to go ahead and put the other end of that wire guardian through the other loop the other little hole there, and just pull it up to the top. And then you wanna put that both strands through that um, crimp tube, and make sure you don't have your little strands crisscross as best as you can. And then we're going to just pull it up as far as we want it to be. I usually like right about there. And then I'm gonna grab my crimping pliers and I'm gonna use the, the large notch right here, this last one to do my first crimp. Okay, like that. And if you can see, it looks like a, like a macaroni noodle. I don't know if you can tell. And then I'm gonna put it in the very first spot and I'm gonna put it the opposite direction and close it up. So now I have this nice little, 
really nice little crimp. All right, and let's start with, hmm, let's start with one of these big, let me trim that off, little wiry on there. I have not yet found a pair of cutters. <laughs> I need to do this. This is so terrible. All right, so I want to start with this guy and I'm just going to put him on, string him right on. And I'm gonna put him, the both wires through that bead. And for those of you who have been around Wendy um, a lot and watched her videos, she always squeezes in just a little bit, just a tiny bit, just so that it looked, just so that it looked nice. And of course I probably just squeezed it too much, but I'll fix that. All right, moving right along. So then I would like to do um, probably this guy. Let's see how many of these do we have? Two, two, yeah. So let's do this little star-shaped spacer bead. And again, you just wanna put it through that wire like so. That's, that's gonna be fun. That's gonna be fun looking. All right, and then, let's do this. I was kind of thinking that these were drilled like through here, but they're not. But you know what? I'm okay with that. I'm, I think I kind of like the way that looks. It's kind of um, futuristic. So there's that. And then let's do another one of these. Let's double up on this, on these guys. Maybe. Or you know, these could these do look like spurs, but they could be like a sheriff star. Like, it's <laughs> kind of what it looks like to me. And then let's um, put this one on. And let's put this one on too. These bead sets are really cute. And these, these, this bead here has like the really large hole, so you can even use it with, um, you know, something else like leather or whatever. So let's use one more of these. Let's just keep the other two off to the side. Let's use our other gold ball. Okay, like so. And then I want to use one of these larger red opaque beads. And we're gonna do a bead cap the opposite direction. And another one of these large red beads. And then a bead cap, bead cap facing that one. And then another one of these large red beads with a daisy spacer in between. Let's do a couple daisy spacers. I like these. I don't really have any rhyme or reason to what I'm doing. I'm just doing. <laughs> and I'm thinking it's gonna turn out cute. I hope so anyway. All right, so we have that. Let's do another daisy spacer here. And then let's do, let's see, what do we have? Oh yeah, let's just finish the rest of this off with these little red beads. All the way down to the end. Or as many as we need. So I got a couple things to share with you guys. I went to the grocery store this morning um, and I go to two places. I go to Meyer and I go to Aldi. Um, there's some things I get at Aldi that I enjoy and um, I, do, I do feel like I save a little bit of money going there too, um, especially for things that like, 
like loaves of bread are really inexpensive. And when you have, um, you know, a bunch of people in your house, you tend to go through a lot of bread. And, you know, um, and plus, you know, one night each week, we usually do like a, a soup and sandwich night. So I'll make tomato soup and grilled cheese and um, stuff like that. So I'll go there. Um, and plus they have a lot of, uh, my stepson Xander has celiacs. So they have a lot of gluten-free options that won't break the bank. So if you do have um, a special diet, I mean, try there if you haven't. It. It's, they actually have quite a few things to to pick from. All right, so I kind of don't want to use these last two because I think I might want them. Well, you know what? It's fine because I do have other red that will look good with this too. I mean, the other all this red matches. It doesn't matter. So um, anyway, when you go to Aldi, you need a quarter for your shopping cart. And then when you put your shopping cart away, you get your quarter back. Well, it just seems like the Aldi in my area, um, everyone just seems like super helpful and um, really great to, uh, they, they always want to like, one, help each other out, but then um, also they are just friendly people that seem to go there. I don't know. Anyway, maybe I'm just being weird, but they seem like they're just really friendly people. And um, I think this is going to be an issue. This bead keeps like going inside. But you know what? I can put a, um, a one of those little crimp tube cap things over top of it. <laughs> crimp tube covers. Anyway, so one of the things that I notice that we tend to do a lot of is one person has a cart and, you know, like I said, you put a quarter in. But usually you're getting out of your car with your bags and you're like, okay, well, I'm going to go get a cart. But then you see someone unloading their car into their car and you offer them your quarter so that you can um, use their cart. And more times than none, um, usually the person will be like, no, I don't need my quarter. You know, you just take my cart and, and that's all there is to it. So... It's pretty cool. Like I do the same thing. Like I just, if somebody um, needs the cart, I just give them my cart and I don't ask for the quarterback. But today was different. So I, I had like four quarters in my purse and I never, I rarely ever use cash. So when I do have change, it's kind of weird. And most of the time I end up just dumping it out of my purse into our collective change jar at home or I'll keep it in like a little dish in my office drawer so that if I do want to get like candy or chocolate or a little bag of chips and the vending machine at work, then I can. Um, but today I'm like, you know what? I just feel like opening up four cards. So I, I got one from the lady who was putting her groceries away and she says she didn't need my quarter. So I, I told her, I said, okay, well then I'm just gonna leave it for somebody too. And she's like, good deal. And so I went up to the front of the store and I just started putting quarters in carts and undoing them so that people could just grab them. And I was kind of smiling when I thought about it. I'm like, you know what? It's something so little and something kind of like really just silly. But I can tell you there's been times where I went pulled up to Aldi and I did not have a quarter. And so then I had to go inside and I had to ask the cashier if I could borrow a quarter so I could get a cart. And you know, it, <laughs> So it's something like that that can really make your day. If you walk up and you're like, oh, there's a cart that's ready. Good, because I didn't bring my quarter. And then I got to thinking, I'm like, I wonder like how far a quarter would go like that before somebody just, you know, absentmindedly put the cart away and put the quarter in their pocket. You know, I wonder how many people that cart could go through. I don't know. It's kind of silly, but I think about stuff like that. All right, so here's my bracelet. This is my first one. And I think it's kind of cute. I really kind of like it. And like I said, I'm going to have to put um, a little um, crimp tube cover over top of my crimp tube. So I'm just going to let this be a little loose here and just kind of keep my, keep that in mind because they're actually in a different room right now because I was, while my husband was um, watching the game last night, I was doing some beating on the couch. So I left him in there. 
anyway, so I'll fix that later. So I'm going to go ahead and string on my other crimp tube and my another wire guardian. I'm sure at some point I'm gonna to need to pause the video so I'll, you know, before I go onto the earrings or something. So I'll just go grab them really quick just so I can have it finished and done. All right, so we're doing the same thing. I string, I string my wire through my wire guardian and then back down through the crimp tube. And I know some people don't do it. Um, I don't do it for any reason other than I just feel like it gives it kind of like a finished, a neater finished look. I do go through at least one bead, as well as my crimp tube. And then I'm just gonna gently pull that down to where I want it to be, making sure that I'm remembering to leave myself some room there for my crimp tube cover. So let me just push that out a little bit. There we go, so I got room for that. And then I am going to crimp this one down. So again, I'm using the last notch first Okay, and then I'm turning it the other way, sideways, and then I'm using the very front notch. I know there's some people who have gotten the um, that really nice uh, crimper. I think Softflex sells it, I think. And I wanna know like who all out there have that, and, um, and I want your honest opinion. How is it worth getting? I mean, is it like game changer? Is it, does it make that much of a difference with the way your um, your jewelry pieces look? Does it totally eliminate needing to buy um, crimp tube covers? That's what I wanna know. Okay, so this bracelet looks really cute. Really, really cute so far. So let me get my um, jump rings out and I just wanna use the smallest ones I have and I believe these are like four. Maybe even threes. And I'm gonna use those. So I can, where is it, there it is. So I can attach my toggle. So I'm just using my jump ring through my wire guardian and I'm putting the bar on the smaller end because um, it's easier to fit through the, the other part of your toggle. If you put this on the end with large beads, you, you kind of you struggle getting that toggle through the hole for some reason. I think the large beads kind of get in the way. All right, so let's just close that up, making sure it's closed all the way. You should hear a click or feel a click. I think this is cute with these little like star shaped, like George Jetson-y looking things. And those of you who know who I'm talking about when I say George Jetson, welcome to being part of the old lady group. <laughs> I'm kidding. Anyway, so there we go. All right, and we're gonna close that up. All right, I am going to pause this real quick. I'm gonna go run and get those covers because if I don't do it now, then I probably never will and I'll be struggling with this forever. So I'm gonna pause this for a second, we'll fix that, and then we will um, hang a little dangle off, the, um, off one of these and then we will do the earrings for it. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I ran and got them really quick. So I have, I'm just gonna pull out a few here. There we go. Came to the table unprepared all the way. Won't be the first time, won't be the last. All right, so yeah. So anyway, the other um, crimper, magical crimper, I believe it's called. If that's not right, someone please correct me. Um, I would like to know, you know, out of like, a one to 10, 10 being, girl, you should have purchased that a year ago. And one being, no, you can do just fine without it. 
Give me a ranking, please, if you could, because I'm super curious about it. And I really want to, um, I want to know if it's worth my money. All right, so if you've never used these, these little crimp covers, they're really great and they just kind of make the little space for like a bead. I've used them to fill in like a space before because I was a dork and I didn't tighten my um, beads the way I should have on my strand, but it works in a pinch. <laughs> so you don't have to restring everything because usually by the time you figure that out, it's way too late. All right, so I am just slipping that over my crimp tube like that. And then you just come in with your pliers and you just close it gently, really kind of slowly. Some of these are super tough, some of them are super malleable. Um, I think it really just depends on where you buy them. The one I have here seems to be pretty stubborn. So you can just squeeze it. Sometimes I'll even use my crimping pliers and use, the, use them to kind of coax it along. And I just try to round it out so I'm kind of hitting it from all sides. See, now this is where I would say that the mag magical crimping pliers would probably come in handy more and I wouldn't be fooling with this little guy. And you just kind of make it so that it looks, well, mine doesn't look super round, but you want it to look like a ball. <laughs> Good thing this is for me. All right, so then I have my other one. We're just gonna put that on here, so I might as well put them on both sides. And sometimes using the um, crimping pliers just gives it that little notch for it to sit in so you can actually grip it and, um, yeah, why is that not, why am I having a hard time? It's like my fingers sometimes don't wanna like work. All right. So I, I guess I also wanna know like how many out there of you do any type of meal planning whatsoever? Like, are you all in where you have your weekly menu and you shop accordingly and then you prep a lot of your food on the weekends so weeknights are super easy? Or are you kind of like, yeah, I'm into it. I don't know where to start. Or are you like me where you're somewhere in the middle where you prep certain things and then just hope for the best for the rest of the week? I, um, I do plan my meals. That's the one thing I do. I have a little menu on the refrigerator that I write every week. I even write in our eating out day, which is Fridays. Um, and that way we can plan ahead and plan accordingly to what we're doing. And if I'm running late from coming home from work, uh, Shane can get started on dinner because there's no mystery to what we are having. So it works out perfectly for us. Um, as far as prep, I do prep like my lunch stuff. Like I take a lot of cut up vegetables. I love um, bell peppers and um, cucumbers. So I cut all that up and put that in a large container so that way it's easy for me to grab in the morning, throw it in a little dish or in a baggie. Um, I wash out my grapes and pull them off the stems and put them in a container so that, I notice that if, if you do that, people will tend to eat it and you won't waste any fruit or vegetables. But if you just leave it whole, nobody's gonna wanna do anything with it and they, <laughs> you'll end up throwing away a bell pepper by the end of the week. So um, that was that's one thing I do. Another thing that a friend of mine actually gave me this idea and I thought it was genius. I, um, about a week ago, um, the Meyer that I go to, they had in the ad red and yellow potatoes where buy one, get one free um, for the bags. All right, so let me see, before I go on with that story, I do want to hang a dangle. So let me see what kind of dangle do we want. Maybe we need to do just a little red one with some bead caps on it. All right, so I bought one bag of the yellow potatoes and one bag of the red potatoes. I like using those because um, they cook really quickly and you can leave the skins right on them and make mashed potatoes. So I love that. 
All right, so I grabbed a head pin and I grabbed um, a little um, jump ring. See guys, I'm telling you, I'm having like the biggest issue with remembering what I'm trying to say. All right, so there's my bead cap and then there's my bead and my other bead cap. And then we're going to do a wrapped loop on this guy. So I'm just gonna bring my round nose pliers down to the top of my bead, push my wire over the top so it's just a straight line going out from myself, flip my wrist like this so now my pliers are going like this and my wire is running between the two. Bring my wire up and over the top of my pliers so that it looks like that. And then flip my wrist back, so now it's opposite, and now the bot, what was on the bottom is on the top. And I bring that wire underneath my pliers. Then I can just pull that off, and I can use my bent nose pliers to give myself some room to do my wraps. So let's do this wrap and just wrap it around to where you're satisfied. You can go a couple times. If you can fit three, you can go three. Um, I, it looks like I could fit three. So we're gonna clip off the rest of that wire that we don't need, put it in a little trash jar. And just gonna squish down any little piece that might be sticking up. All right, and then I think I wanna hang them right here, right off my toggle, actually. So we're going to use this little tiny jump ring. Gonna open it up, hang a little dangle on it, and hang it right from our toggle, like so. Yeah, that looks cute. All right, so here's our first bracelet. Now let's make the earrings that go along with it. Yeah, that's adorable. I like that. All right, so I wanna incorporate these into my earrings somehow, and I think the way I'm gonna do it is I'm going to use some jump rings to connect so that these can be like that and have something hang down. So maybe um, I can, hmm, I don't want to use that bicone. Maybe we can do this guy, and this guy, and then actually maybe we do this, and then these up here at the top. I think that might look cute. So in order to do that, I think we're gonna need some bigger jump rings, just a couple of them. I think we'll need a few of the small ones, so I'm just gonna pull a little handful out. We'll probably use them later anyway. We're gonna need a couple ear wires. Um, not sure if I'm gonna use any bead caps or not but I think I got some silver ones in there. How'd that happen? All right, so I am going to grab, I'm going to need a couple of my ball head pins. I'm going to need a couple of my um, eye pins. And let's just build this from the bottom up. So I'm going to grab my ball head pin, string on this nice little long guy here and then we're going to I think we're just going to do a simple loop and I can do it with these ball head pins because they're super thick so in order to do that you just want to bend your wire directly over the top of your bead nice straight line come in and you're going to 
probably take off quite a bit and leave only about a quarter of an inch, which I measure by pushing the bead against my finger. You can see how it's like indenting my finger and then putting my cutters right up against my other finger and cutting right about there. That's how I measure it. And then you go to the end of your little wire, find where you wanna put your loop. I usually right about here and just roll back until you make your loop. Like so. All right, so we have that. And now let's find our bigger jump rings here. Not sure how this is gonna look, but we're gonna give it a shot. We're gonna see what we can do with it. Let's just twist it open. We can feed our bead on there. Let's try this little star here. You know, I wonder if we could do this little daisy spacer too. Kind of give it a little more dimension. Oh, that might actually be really cute. All right, we're gonna try it. I'm not, I can't guarantee it's gonna work, but we're gonna try it. All right, close up your jump ring and let's just see how that looks. You know what, that's actually, I think, I think it hanging this way looks cuter. Hmm. Well, let's, let's just do what we started doing. So I wanna make sure this is closed up because I could see that it's not quite all the way. Just a teeny tiny little bit. And that's all you need is a teeny tiny little bit and it will fall off of whatever you're doing. All right, so we have that. And then, do we, do we put another, sorry, I'm trying to figure this out as I go. Let's see, let's put another one through. I don't know if two will fit. Oh man. All right, that's okay though, that's all right, because I think I got an idea. Because looking at the back of this, I think I can hook my, mm, you know what? I think that we're better off hanging it from down below. Okay, so let's do this. We're gonna start this over, at least part of it. So let's cut off this. This won't be the only time I waste a head, um, a head pin. <laughs> That's right. This is what you have to do to be creative, correct? All right, so let's do this. And since we know that it looks better hanging from there, let's just go ahead and open this eye pin. And let's see if we can get this to work the way we want it to. Let's hook it on that jump ring. Oh yeah, that's gonna be adorable. Look, we're, this is what we're doing. It kind of looks like a little snowflake in a way. All right, and then let's close that head pin. And you open head uh, eye pins exactly the same way you open and close jump rings with the twisting back and forth, not opening it like, like a C. All right, so this is what we have, which I think that's gonna be cute. And then we can feed on this bead. And we can leave them that size, actually. I think I wanna keep them that size. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. All right, so we're gonna do that. And then this is going to be a simple loop. And so since our ear wire goes like this, we're gonna want our loop to go this way. So it can connect right onto there. So again, it, goes, it hooks on like that. So we want our loop to go this way. I always have to think about that. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna take our uh, wire and we're gonna bend it straight across the top of that bead. So that's what it looks like. To have a nice straight line right across the top. Then we're gonna come in real close Cut that off, leave about a quarter of an inch, and then let's make our little loop. Oops. Yeah, it's a good strong head pin. It's not going anywhere. All right, and now that we have our little loop, 
Just make sure it's closed all the way. We can hang it from, I'm using the kidney shaped ones. I like these sometimes. And just hanging them right on there. Oh, I think I hung it on backwards. I did. So that's the thing too, is you wanna make sure the part that you want facing out is facing out there. That's the part we want facing out. So there's our first one. That's cute, I like that. All right, now that we got it figured out and we know what we're doing, it's a lot easier. Don't need that head pin right now, but we'll use them later. All right, so we already have our jumping open. Let's go ahead and put on our big spacer and I will get back to the potato thing in a second. I just wanna talk through some stuff. I'm sorry if I'm leaving you in suspense. It's really not that exciting of a story, but it's just something I wanted to share with you guys. <laughs> so here we go. All right. Okay, now we can close that one. And now we can go ahead and open up this guy. Let's open him up. Hang him on our jump ring. And then close him back up. Okay, put our bead on. Like so. And we already know how these face, so we need to make our loop off to the side here. So I bent that over to do a simple loop. We're going to cut the wire right about there. And then I'm going to use my round nose pliers and I'm gonna make that loop, just rolling it back until I get a connection. And just make sure Make sure it's actually touching. All right, and now we can put this one on our kidney ear wire. Nope, I put it backwards. <laughs> there we go, now we got it. All right, so there's our first bracelet and earring set. I think it turned out really cute. I think it's really adorable. It has a little dangle. Really, really pretty. All right, so I'm gonna move that one off to the side. I'm gonna clean up a little bit, and then we're gonna get ready for the next one. Okay, and we are ready for the next one. So um, I think we're gonna use beading wire again because I have just enough left, I think, to make a bracelet. So let's see. Oh yeah, yeah, I would say plenty, okay. And whatever we have left over, like I said, it'll probably just go right to my stash and um, I'll use it in future projects. So I think with this one, I like these. I think I wanna use that as like a focal. Maybe. Actually, maybe like this. Like that. And don't know if I want to use those bike combs. smaller red ones and some coarse bead caps and spacers. Okay. All right, so that's what we have so far. And of course,
course, we do have our toggle that we'll be using for this as well. All right, let's go ahead and we'll get this strung. So knowing that I want it to be a certain pattern, I want to start in the middle. So let's string on this guy, our little focal bead. And on either side of that, let's go ahead and put um, a couple, one of these daisy spacers on each side here, just to kind of give it some space so these aren't actually touching it. And then let's put on our big clear beads. I should say transparent red bag beads. All right, so now that I'm just stringing, I'm gonna to get to my story. So one of my girlfriends said that whenever she buys potatoes, um, she knows that they tend to, you know, they'll get the little eyes on them and then, you know, it, it's almost getting to the point where there might be questionable whether you should eat them or not. So what she does is she gets her bag of potatoes and she washes them up. She puts them in her Instapot or if you have a pressure cooker, you can do it in your pressure cooker. And it, you put a little bit of water in the bottom, put the little rack, you know, over on top of the water so that the potatoes aren't just sitting right in the water. And then um, you steam, well not steam, but actually pressure cook your potatoes. And so when you do that, you have potatoes that are still whole potatoes. They may have like a little split in them but they're cooked all the way through. And now you can put them in a container, put them in your refrigerator, and you can maybe do like a little, you know, baked potato for yourself or make mashed potatoes for the family because it's already done, you just have to heat it up. Um, or, you know, whatever. I like I like to make, use that and, and fry them. Like when I make a breakfast for dinner or something like we're gonna do tonight. So I'll have that with bacon and eggs and I'll make fried potatoes. So. Um, it's just like a, something that you can do that makes your life like that much easier during the week. And I don't know why I never thought of it prior to her telling me all about it. So now it's, it's one of those things I do often, especially if I end up getting a lot of potatoes and I will do that and have them ready to be eaten in the refrigerator and just eat them that week and you're good to go. All right. So let's see here. See where we're at because we might not need all of these. Oop. So we do need to go a little bit more and I do want to use the gold ones because there's a lot of red in this so let's use these. Okay let me see where we're at now. I always have such a hard time like <laughs> getting my fingers. Okay, so we do definitely need both um, both red beads on both sides. So I'm just gonna feed these on. Like so. All right, and now we need our crimp tubes and our wire guardians. And we won't need to use any of the um, crimp tube covers because I'm using the small beads with the small holes right here. So we can skip that step. All right, so I'm going to feed on my crimp tube. Just let that fall down. And my wire guardian. And then just fold my wire over the top of my wire guardian, feed it down through the other little tunnel there. And then you can put your um, crimp tube, your wire through your crimp tube, and if you want through that next bead. All right. And then you can go ahead and crimp that. Alright, we got a little crimp there. I'm just going to squeeze that gently to 
so it looks better. And then just feed the rest of that, those beads over top of your little fragment of wire there. And then do the same thing on this side. So put your crimp tube on, put your wire guardian on, fold your wire over, put it through the other side of your wire guardian, through your crimp tube, through at least one bead. And just try to keep them separated so you're not crossing the wires. Then you can pull on your wire and tighten everything down. Okay, and then squeeze your crimp tube and squeeze it again the other way. Perfect. And then we can cut this wire off. We don't need any more. All right, so we, that's what we have. And I really love these satiny beads. I think they are so, so pretty. All right, so let's grab a couple little jump rings and let's grab our pliers and let's hook our toggle on. We still have quite a bit left. I could probably do another whole bracelet, but I'm not going to. I think we're just going to save those and I'll add them to my stash since we got two, since we're getting two bracelets and two pairs of earrings out of it. toggle. Cute. Really cute. Okay. That toggle is just so pretty. I really like it. Oh, I have one right here. And here we go. All right, and I want to use this gold ball as a dangle, but I do want to do this little, one of these little beads too, these little six millimeter beads. So let's just do this for our dangle. And we are going to do a wire wrapped loop. So players, there we go. And when I'm all done, I will put the earrings in so you can see what they look like. Um, and I'll put the bracelets on so you can see what they look like. I'll probably put them on together because I think you could just go ahead and stack them and wear them both if you wanted to. Just need our jump ring. Oh, come on. And we'll hang him right from this other jump ring. Let's hook that together and see how that looks. Oh, super cute. That toggle's a little funky. There we go. That's pretty. 
That turned out really pretty. I like that. All right, and now let's do our pair of earrings. I guess maybe I'm not, I mean, to be completely honest, I'm not too super fond of these. Um, they're cute. Um, you know, I will, of course, wear them, but um, I guess I'm just not as much of a fan of these. But I'll use them, because I'll, I'll put them on. And with having long hair, you will probably notice all the little odd things. So I am actually just going to put them on just the way they are, because there's enough there, and you don't have to really do anything more than that. So I do want it to face out a certain way though, because this the back half has this little thing down the middle and I'd rather not see that. And then I am just going to close it up and there's one. And then, I mean, we could probably dress this up more and like whenever one of these would fit. Oh yeah, let's do that just to kind of give it a little something extra. Yeah, I, I can like that. I can deal with that. There. Maybe that'd be just, no, that's just gonna be too much. All right, so there we go. We just dressed up that little Kimmy a little bit. <laughs> so there we have it. And I will go ahead and um, take my earrings out that I have in right now and um, I will put on these bracelets and show you guys what they look like. All right, see you in a few. Okay, try on time. So we're gonna put these earrings on first. <laughs> Here we go. I took off my little aqua jacket that I was wearing because I was freezing, so that way it wouldn't look really weird. All right. Can't find my ear hole. I don't know why sometimes it's easier to find one and not the other. Sorry, could have been better prepared for this. There we go, found it. Okay, so there's those, which they actually look cute, and I think it looks better too to have this little um, bead on the kidney. And from a distance, you can't tell that they're not really like super high quality. So it's just a little fun pair of earrings to wear like costumey jewelry. And then I have both the bracelets on, and I think they both turned out really, really adorable. Look how cute that is. So there's that one. Really, really pretty. And then here's this one. And I love that those satiny beads. They're just really, really pretty too. But I think they turned out cute and you can wear them together. They look really good together. And let's put on the other pair of earrings so you can see those. Dog's going crazy out back. All right, I don't know if you can hear him or not, but he's barking because a neighbor is in their own yard, because that's what he does. <laughs> and apparently everyone in the house that is not busy doing something else is ignoring him. Go figure. All right. So, get this other pair in. And okay, there we go. And there's the pair that I made. So they're a little bit smaller, which I like. It's really cute. I think they turned out really good. All right, so you know what? Not bad for a $6 set because we still have, um, I have stuff to add to my stash too. So I have all of this to add to my stash. There's all those little gold pieces. And then I have a bunch of red too. So not bad, pretty cool. 
two bracelets, two pairs of earrings, and a little bit of extra for my stash. All in all, I think that these little kits are well worth it. And I will make sure that I, I know that walmart.com does have them. So I'll link you to um, where they are on their website as well so that you can check them out yourself. They have other colors too. They have like a purple, um, like a champagne color. They have a black, um, a lot of really pretty ones. And they're really cute little sets. I mean, I think they would even be a cute gift for somebody, you know, if they're interested, you know, like interested in starting to do any kind of beading or someone who already does beading, just little sets like that. They're kind of fun. All right, everyone, that's all I have for today. Cheeto is still asleep. He turned around the other way, but he's still asleep. Um, thank you again for being here. Thank you for your support of uh, Wendy's Crafting Friends channel. Um, we think about her every time we do this. So. Um, God bless all of you and I hope you have a great week and please take care of yourself and others. Bye.